Hey guys, Jaden here. Happy 20th anniversary, Animal Crossing! April 14th, 2021 marks the 20th anniversary of Animal Crossing. Five main series games plus their enhanced versions and three spin offs were released during these 20 years. So let's take a mini lesson on the history of Animal Crossing. For those who aren't acquainted with Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing is a life simulation game which uses system clock. The player plays as the only human in the town. The objective of this game is to interact with the animal villagers and befriend them, as well as having ideal life in town by earning money and paying loans, which is what you usually do IRL. Without further ado, let's get the show started. The very first game in the franchise, Animal Crossing for N64, known as Dobutsu no Mori, was released on April 14, 2001 in Japan. There were 216 villagers in this game, and more villagers were added with each re-release. As of March 2021, only 63 of those 216 villagers appear in every Animal Crossing game to date. The size of the town is 5 acres by 6 acres. It might not be as big as the island in New Horizons, it was actually bigger than most towns in other Animal Crossing towns. Up to 15 villagers could live in a town, no other games allowed that many villagers at once. Yes, I'm talking to you, New Horizons. As N64 did not have an internal clock, the time system was implemented in the game pack powered by a CR2032 battery. About 200,000 copies were sold, which wasn't a lot compared to future installments. It could be because this game was released at the end of N64 life cycle. As such, a GameCube port known as Domus no Mori was released 8 months later. Here's a bit of a trivia. This is the first Animal Crossing game released in Chinese, not New Horizons. Animal Crossing, population growing for Nintendo GameCube, which is an enhanced port of the original game, was released worldwide from 2001 to 2004, depending on the region. And no, I did not make up the subtitle. It was originally called Animal Forest for Nintendo GameCube, which was the literal translation of Dobutsu no Mori. 20 new villagers were introduced in addition to the 216 villagers in Animal Crossing N64. To satisfy the players around the world, some Japanese themed holidays were removed or replaced by regional holidays. Most of the features in Animal Crossing N64 were also in this game. This version of Animal Crossing featured e-reader functionality. By scanning different e-reader cards, you could get various rewards. And that was not the best of this game. You could play certain NES games in this game with the GBA connectivity. This might just be the best thing ever at that time. Over 2 million copies were sold worldwide, which is significantly better than Animal Crossing N64. As a result, another enhanced version, Animal Crossing E Plus for Nintendo GameCube, was released exclusively in Japan on June 27, 2003. There were 84 new villagers in this version, bringing the total number of villagers to 320. Most of the new villagers can be invited by scanning e-reader cards of said villagers. From this game onwards, villagers can be befriended, and each villager has their own preferences. About 386,000 copies were sold, better than Animal Crossing N64 at least. Animal Crossing Wild World for Nintendo DS was released in late 2005. This was the first game to feature online multiplayer via Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, although this service was discontinued in May 2014. Wild World has the smallest town in the series, only 4 acres across by 4 acres down, and only 8 villagers could live in one town. Despite this, many facilities were added to this game, such as Town Hall, Observatory, and more. And of course, how could I forget the roost? That one facility that everyone and their mothers are craving for. 18 new villagers were introduced, 6 of them were monkeys, which was a new species in this game. Although monkey villagers were only available via online distribution, and can no longer be obtained legitimately by net. Even though 18 new villagers were introduced, 188 out of 320 villagers in E Plus were removed in this game, bringing the total number of villagers down to 150, the fewest out of any game. Although this game introduces new events, most, if not all, of the events from the previous game were removed. From this game onwards, players can customize the interior of villager houses by gifting them furniture, wallpaper, and clothing. Villager photos were introduced in this game as rewards for having very high friendship with villagers. 11.75 million copies were sold, which is much higher than all three versions of Animal Crossing combined. Animal Crossing City Folk for Nintendo Wii was released in November 2008. All 150 villagers in Wild World returned in this game, along with 18 new villagers and 42 previously removed villagers. We Connect 24 allowed players to connect this game to the internet for benefits, though this feature is no longer possible. 
This game allows safe data transfer on Wireworld. Game reviewers receive a demo copy of Wireworld to test this, and a certain sheep villager may or may not be called racist. We probably need to address this, but there's a time and place for everything. But anyway, this game introduced the city where shops like the Auction House, Crazy Red, and Crazy Grace were accessible. Former and current villagers could sometimes show up in the city. The town size is 5 acres crossed by 5 acres down, and has a maximum of 10 villagers living at once. Another fact, Animal City, one of the secret KK songs in New Horizons, is based on this city. Many events absent in Wireworld make a return in this game. Villager behaviors are more or less the same as Wireworld, but this game lacks villager photos, which is kind of a bummer in my opinion. The sale number of City Folk wasn't great either, only at 3.38 million. Animal Crossing New Leaf for Nintendo 3DS, which featured the debut of Isabel, was released in late 2012 in Japan and 2013 elsewhere. This game introduces two new species, deer and hamster, as well as two new personalities, smug and sisterly. As such, 100 brand new villagers, including many fan favorites like Marshall, made their debut in this game. This game introduces the most new villagers out of any game, with the return of 24 removed villagers and the removal of one villager in City Folk. The total number of villagers was increased to 333, even more than Animal Crossing E+. The town size is slightly smaller than City Folk Town, and it can have up to 9 villagers, plus one campsite visitor. In this game, the first player to arrive in the town becomes the mayor of the town. This is the first game that lets the player become the mayor. As Tornema is no longer the mayor, he holds the Tornema Island, where you can participate in certain activities. Main Street is introduced in New Leaf, and it basically functions the same way as the city in City Folk. Everyday facilities such as Timmy and Tommy's shop and Nook's homes are located on Main Street. Just like the city, both current and former villagers can show up on Main Street. Various changes are made regarding the villagers. Each personality has their own animalist voice. Villagers are capable of doing various things, such as fishing and entering buildings. Villager photos made a return in this game. From this game onwards, you cannot change villagers' wallpaper and flooring. We'll talk about sale numbers later, as this game received a major update in 2016. Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer for Nintendo 3DS was released in mid-2015. This is the first spin-off game in the series, as well as the first game to feature the use of Amiibo. As this is a spin-off game, you do not live in a town or bond with villagers. Instead, you work at Nook's homes to help decorate villagers' houses. Eventually, you are able to decorate various facilities as well. All 333 villagers in New Leaf are in this game, plus one additional villager and five distribution-only villagers. Unfortunately, this game was criticized for its lack of challenge, and it only supported series 1 through 4 amiibo cards. There were never updates to this game besides the launch update. This means that Welcome Amiibo Amiibo cards and Crossover Amiibo cards cannot be used in this game. About 3 million copies were sold, which is alright I guess. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival for Nintendo Wii U was released in 2015. This is an Animal Crossing as a board game, and requires the use of Amiibo figures and Series 1-4 through four Amiibo cards. But here is the thing, it is the worst selling game in the series. This game is criticized for its uninteresting gameplay and the amiibo system isn't well implemented. And you can't play this game without amiibo, even though this game is bundled with some amiibo figures and cards. On top of that, it was released on an unpopular console. Only about 20,000 copies were sold during the first week of Japan, and according to Wikipedia, about 90,000 copies were sold so far. Not even 10% of Happy Home Designer sales. This game is not available digitally. The only other physical copy game that comes to mind is Ring Fit Adventure, which is a good game that I keep forgetting to buy. True story, I've seen a new copy of this game showing up in 5 below before, and you know how much it was sold for. 2015 is not a good year for Animal Crossing, is it? So rather than releasing a new Animal Crossing game on Wii U, a major update of Animal Crossing New Leaf, known as Welcome Amiibo, was introduced in November 2016. Players that already had New Leaf could just simply update the game, while the physical version of Welcome Amiibo was available later. The Japanese and European versions included one Amiibo card in each physical copy. With 50 villagers from Welcome Amiibo series, 14 crossover villagers, and 2 promotion-only villagers, this game has 399 villagers, the most out of any game. 
Although New Horizons could easily beat the record since there are already 397 villagers right now. This update allows players to scan amiibo to get various items, or even inviting the villagers to live in town. It also introduces two new minigames, Animal Crossing Puzzle League and Desert Island Escape. Some quality of life changes were made to the update. For example, villager plots cannot be placed on custom paths, and villagers cannot get sick. Including the base game, 12.82 million copies are sold, and it beats Wild World as the best-selling game in the series at that time. Is handheld Animal Crossing game a way to go? Animal Crossing Pocket Camp for iOS and Android was released in November 2017. This game is co-developed by DNA and ND Cube. It was planned to release in March 2017 but was delayed many times. This free-to-play game originally had 40 villagers at the start and now has 247 villagers after nearly three and a half years. This game introduces crafting as a way to get items using crafting materials. Crafting materials can be obtained by befriending villagers. Some of these crafted furniture are required to invite villagers to the campsite. Think of it as an adventure game because the level system is a thing in this game. Villagers that appear at higher levels as well as special villagers usually take longer to invite. There can be up to 8 villagers in a campsite and players can invite or say goodbye to their villagers anytime, provided that they fulfill the requirements. Players can also decorate the campsite, cabin, and camper with furniture. Also, loan is a thing in this game with candle expansions. As this is a free-to-play game, this game offers in-app purchases such as additional leaf tickets and pocket camp club subscription. As of April 2020, this game has grossed over $150 million. The latest entry of the series, as well as the best-selling game in the series, Doom Crossing Eternal Horizons. Wait, that doesn't sound right. Animal Crossing New Horizons for Nintendo Switch was released on March 20th, 2020 worldwide. All 333 Series 1 through 4 villagers and all 50 welcome amiibo villagers return in this game, along with 8 brand new villagers. New Horizons has the most villagers at launch at 391, and version 1.9 reintroduces 6 Sanrio villagers, bringing the total number of villagers to 397. This game takes place on a deserted island instead of a partially established town, and your job is to make this island your dream island. There are more differences between this game and other Animal Crossing games that you can count, I'm not going to list every single one of them. The changes are as follows. While not the first game to feature crafting or outdoor furniture placement, New Horizons is the first game in the main series to feature both. This is the first game with fully customizable character and is no longer determined by the series of questions. For the first time ever, up to 8 players can live on a single island and up to 4 players can play on the same screen. Also for the first time ever, events added via updates are time locked and can only be unlocked by connecting to the internet at the right time. Many changes were made regarding the villagers. They look more detailed in this game and have different voice pitches based on size. They can also wear sleep outfits, and sheep in particular can actually wear shirts and dresses. And more importantly, villagers cannot move out without permission, and the restriction on villager invites is minimal. Once you have 6 villagers, that is. All special characters have their own voices as well, and the list of changes keeps going on and on and on. As this game was released during the COVID-19 pandemic, many people picked this game up so they have something to spend time at home or to do things that they couldn't do in real life, such as marriage and graduation ceremony. And as such, this game was sold in 31.18 million copies as of December 2020, more than double the sale of New Leaf. In fact, New Horizons is the second best-selling game for the Nintendo Switch, only behind Mario Kart 8 Deluxe but not very far behind. So popular, it was nominated for Game of the Year 2020. Although it did not win the award, it still got several rewards such as Best Family Game. There you have it, every Animal Crossing game released during these 20 years. There might be some error that I may not know about, but if you find this useful, be sure to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel. With that, I'll see you next time. Bye.